Not drinking beer today. Ah, oh, fuck that. I'm all going. Without any kind of hyperbole, I think it's safe to say that Arnold Schwarzenegger was dealt one of the shittiest hands in all of Hollywood. Born in a small Austrian village, still recovering from World War II, and growing up in a house that didn't even have a working shitter until he was about 10 years old, Arnold Schwarzenegger became one of the richest, most powerful, and recognised men on the entire planet, thanks to his insane ability to hustle like an absolute motherfucker. So go on, Carl, begin the epic tale of Schwarzenegger's rise to power. Well, the first thing that he did when he arrived in LA in the 1970s was he started a bricklaying business. It doesn't sound like something he'd do, right? But being smart, he decided to staff this fledgling business exclusively with bodybuilders he'd met at Gold's Gym. So basically, this was just a bricklaying business staffed exclusively by giant, buff, burly men. Hot stuff coming through. In addition to staffing his business with some of the buffest men in all of LA, Schwarzenegger also charged rock bottom prices, hoping that the people of LA would recognize a good fucking deal when they saw one. So is this how he made all his money? No, the business failed. It made no money and no one would hire Arnold Schwarzenegger. Despite the fact there was a big gang of muscular men. Yeah, and they charged rock bottom prices. Just think for a second, people watching at home, this is what Arnold Schwarzenegger looked like back then. And he was offering to do like basically random work around people's houses for like a fraction of the price of like his nearest competitor with a group of his equally as buff and large friends. You'd think at least one lonely housewife in LA would have taken him up on that offer. So you're basically talking about every Diet Coke advert ever. <laughs> when you do the adverts where the women look out the window, it's always like some unreasonably handsome man taking his shirt off and he's got like a six pack and he's ripped to our balls. To be no slave, I don't want you to work all day. That was basically what they could have paid for, for a fraction of the cost of other people. You're getting your house, like, fixed by Mr. Fucking Universe. <laughs> I mean, what are your qualifications? What, for lifting bricks? Well, I've got these. <laughs> is this not enough? <laughs> the thing I find most amazing about this is that not one single lonely housewife thought, I could quite do with having Mr. Universe walk around my house with his shirt off. Remember, in his prime, there are stories that women used to faint when he took his shirt off because they couldn't believe how in shape and muscular he was. There's a story from a couple of years later when he was in um, business school, I think it was. And as part of his thing, he had to do a mandatory physical course. He had to swim a few laps in a pool, which obviously he can easily do. But while he was doing it, like every girl in the school turned up to watch him do it, just to catch a look of this like legendary man's body. <laughs> and like people in the 70s, they could have got this for basically nothing. The thing about a story that annoys me the most is it means that all porn is lies. Because like, this is, we've now got a real world example where lonely housewives in the 1970s could have called a big buff burly man to fix something around the house and it didn't work. So fuck you pornography for lying to everybody. I'm not having it. But don't you see, that's the reason why he made no money. Because every time he did a job, they're always like, oh, I'm afraid I don't have any money to pay you, and sir. He, because he didn't understand American <laughs> customs. He didn't care what it meant. You bitch, and just stormed away. Yeah. That's it, that's it. He turned up, didn't he? And they're like, oh, I don't have any money to pay you. Go, oh, damn it. Not Perhaps I can pay you some other way. Do you have credit card? <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. He didn't understand American customs. So all the housewives are trying to get him to fuck him. He just thought they couldn't pay him and walked off in a huff. So how did he sort this out? How did he actually make some money? Well, uh, Arnold noticed something. Uh, specifically that the people of LA would pay a premium for things from Europe just because they were from Europe. And he noticed that there was a lot of businesses using like marketing buzzwords that didn't really mean anything to make their products sound special, like Italian coffee and Swedish massage. Like basically the same thing that people were already buying, but because they had like a fancy European title, people thought they were worth more. So people paid more for them. This was also a time where everything that was European was huge in America. So we benefited from that, you know, Swedish massages and everything had to be kind of a foreign name. Wait, 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 he didn't change the name of it to Austrian bricklayers, did no, he? No, that would have been too on the nose. What he did instead was he changed his marketing and told people that him and his team of bodybuilders were specialty European bricklayers <laughs> and then doubled his prices. And you know what happened? His phone rang off the hook for the next couple of months. People couldn't get enough of these specialty European bricklayers that, remember, 
people watching at home, like literally a couple of weeks beforehand could have hired for a fraction of the price. The way I imagine this going down is Arnold Schwarzenegger is walking down the street going, why does no one want to hire me? He's like, I am so buff. I've got friends who are equally as buff. We're charging rock bottom prices. We're promising to do the best possible job. We'll walk around with our shirts up. What more could people want? And he walked past a shop and he goes in to buy coffee and he sees the word Italian coffee and he goes, and a light bulb appears with his head and the light bulb is flexing. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I'm European. And he runs out without paying and he runs to his friends in the gym. We were all playing Yu-Gi-Oh, because why not? Fuck it, this is my this is my imagination. I can do what I want in it. And all these buff men are playing Yu-Gi-Oh. And everyone's thinking, guys, guys, we should be specialty European bricklayers. And all the light bulbs appear above their heads and they're all flexing as well, we're doing different bodybuilding poses. And then they go out and they go, this is how we're gonna fuck up this city. <laughs> It's weird to think that them, he's clearly one of like, an incredibly intelligent guy. Oh, he's so smart. People don't realise how smart Arnold Schwarzenegger is. He's got like a, a double degree in business and economics. So obviously, people used to take the piss and think, oh, how was he ever going to be a governor? Like, he was a millionaire before he ever appeared in a film. Like, before Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a film, he was a self-made millionaire. Like, from this business and then from the business after that, which is flipping property. Like, he became an actor because he wanted to be an actor. Like he went, oh, I want to be an actor. Cool, I'm rich enough to make that happen and just hired like the best agent he could afford. And that's why he never changed his name. For his very first film, I think it's called Hercules in Manhattan, which is the first film he appears in, and he's credited under, <laughs> this is true, Arnold Strong. <laughs> and his voice was so bad they dubbed over it. It doesn't even look like me. Look. What, what are you doing? Oh, wow. <laughs> And in that film, you'll find a clip of this, it's amazing. There's a fist fight with a bear. Oh, and the best bit is, the bear's obviously a guy in a costume. <laughs> and he doesn't punch it, he just slaps it with his wrist, because obviously he doesn't want to hurt the guy. So you just see him going, Rah, boom. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. And I think after that, he went, never again. So he credited himself under Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I think the way he put it in like an interview is, when I first started out, people told me, no one had ever put that name on a fucking poster. No one was gonna spend the money to put Arnold Schwarzenegger with how long that bastard is on a poster. But now, it's the most unforgettable part of my brand. You think you're funny, don't you? I know I am. I'm the famous comedian, Arnold Braunschweiger. Schwarzenegger. Just some tight. So is this how he made his fortune? It isn't, no, but he used the profits from it to put himself through business school and he studied business and economics and then he used the money he made from his bodybuilding career and invested in property. And what he did is he basically just kept flipping houses for a couple of years and a few years later, after arriving in America, he was a millionaire. And then he went on to become Conan and the Terminator and the dad from Jingle All The Way. Put that cookie down now! And now he's just an absolute legend who everybody knows. And he's like one of the most famous men on the planet. For the people watching at home, I can't decide what the funniest part of this story is. That lonely housewives turned down the chance to have Mr. Universe walk around their property for next to nothing with his shirt off. Or the fact that people didn't think Arnold Schwarzenegger was qualified to lift heavy things. <laughs> That's the bit that slays me the most, that people didn't hire him until he specifically told people that he was a specialty European bricklayer. Did they not get that from his accent? <laughs> when you called him on the phone to inquire about it, did they not kind of get that he was European based on the accent they got from the guy on the other end of the phone? And then when he turned up to do a quote, and you see that he's like, He's like built like a brick shit out and he's followed by 20 of his buffest friends. And you don't think, this guy's probably the best guy qualified. It's like, nah, I don't trust him. His prices are too low. There's something suspicious <laughs> about this. How can someone, and it's like. There's obviously a scale, the lower prices and you hear his voice, you're like, oh, he's gonna do a piss poor job. He's only coming over here to take advantage. And then in the middle of everyone else. And then above, he's over here cause he's an expert. Yeah, that's probably it. It's the psychological thing, isn't it, you've seen? Well, they're charging more, so there's got to be something special about it, even though there's not, and I think that's what Arnold caught on to. It's a sign for what we should do, Carl. We should start charging more for these videos. Oh, well, more than double nothing's nothing, man. <laughs> double of nothing. So you're saying that he was a millionaire before he even started doing films? He was almost a millionaire before he arrived in America. <laughs> this is how good at business Arnold Schwarzenegger was. Basically, the way he did it is he took all of his earnings from bodybuilding competitions and just invested them 
in a business of selling bodybuilding supplements and magazines and stuff, using his celebrity in the bodybuilding world. And he's known as one of the first bodybuilders to do this. And when he got to America, he said, I continued doing that as well, in addition to all my other side businesses. And in America, it's a lot easier because I had to pay like $6 for a permit. And that was it. Because obviously, he still continued like bodybuilding, bodybuilding competitions. And what's the first thing that people would do when he wins? Like, so how'd you get in shape? And he noticed that he got letters all the time asking him this question. And he realized, well, I could probably charge for this advice. If people want to know, they'll probably pay for the answer. So that's what he did. And that's the reason there's such a, like, a massive bodybuilding business today. Like, all based on basically his idea to think, well, if people are going to ask me for the question, if people are going to ask me this question, they'll probably pay to hear the answer and charge money for like basically his advice. Has he ever done a workout video? I don't know. I know he did Pumping Iron. But he's done pretty much everything else. He's got like the Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilding book, which is considered by many still today to be one of like the foremost like tomes on how to like build muscle. I mean, to be honest, if you look at him, you'd be like, yeah, that guy knows what he's talking well, people about. Still, he has like an entire bodybuilding competition named after him, like the Arnold Classic, because people say that uh, his body was in his prime, like to the Grecian ideal. Like he looks like a statue, yeah. so we, I think they call it. Of like, he's got the perfect V. And he's like perfectly saying he's got a six pack and he hasn't got like a roid gut or anything like that that some bodybuilders have today. But uh, yeah, that's how he became a millionaire. He just basically went, hang on, I'm not going to answer these fucking questions for free. This is my time. Time is money. Uh, I'll tell you what, yeah, you want to know how to get as big as me? Pay me $10. I'm like, okay. Oh shit, pay me $20 to get as big as you? Oh great, pay me 100 And then just kept going and going and going until he found a price point people were happy to pay and made himself a fortune.